Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK, and welcome to my latest video. And before I get on with today's recipe, I'd like to wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas. And if you want to check out any of my Christmas videos, please check out the Christmas playlist. There'll be a link in the description box below the video. And in this one, I'll be making this delicious cheese, onion and potato pie. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. Before I go any further, I'd like to give a quick shout out to this week's Patreon and PayPal donators. And they are Jonathan O'Connor, Philip Reed, Steve Rutherford, Richard Hiller, Kim Christensen, Mike Cabe, York Depp, John Davis, Daniel Chambers, Laura Lutz, Lettuce Mendham, Dromney, Jim Plosse, Magella Bradley, Nicola Krastev and Sue Nagley. Thanks again guys, I really do appreciate all your support. And with that out of the way, let's get on with today's recipe. I'll start by greasing the pie tin and these are the dimensions of the type of tin I'll be using. Now I'm using lard to grease mine, which is pure refined pork fat in my case. And if you don't use pork products, you can use butter, oil or shortening. But if you can use lard, it is the best release agent. OK, it'll be a while before I need this tin. I like to keep mine in the fridge rather than let it sit around a warm kitchen. I'll start the recipe by preparing the pie filling, beginning with the potatoes. I like to use the Morris Piper variety here in the UK. So wherever you live, you want to use a potato that's suitable for mashing. Right, that's them peeled and cut. I'll give them a quick wash and get them on the boil for 20 minutes. Right, I'll get them on a medium heat and bring them up to boil and then I'll start the timer from when they start boiling. OK, while the potatoes are boiling, I'll start the pastry. I'm using my processor to make mine. It's much better and easier this way. But if you want to know how to make it by hand, check out my chicken and mushroom pie video. There'll be a link top corner of the screen. First, I'll add the 340 grams, that's 12 ounces of plain or all-purpose flour, followed by the 85 grams, that's 3 ounces of butter and the same amount of lard or shortening. And I'll give that a quick burst until it resembles fine breadcrumbs. Next to go in is the salt, followed by the 115 grams, that's 115 mils or 4 ounces of cold water. It's important to get the correct amount of water, so if you've got digital scales, it's always more accurate to weigh it. Right, I'll just let the machine go. Once it starts riding around the machine, as you'll see, then the pastry's done. And there it goes. And in real time, using the processor, that only took about 1 minute and 20 seconds to make. Not only is it quicker to use a processor, it's much better as it keeps everything cold. And pastry likes everything cold. Right, I'll cut it in half, wrap it in cling film and get it into the fridge for at least 30 minutes before using it. And to remind you, if you want to make this pastry by hand, check out my chicken and mushroom pie video. There's a link top right of the screen at the end of the video and also in the description box under the video. Right, the potatoes are done, so I'll drain and give them a quick mash. Don't add any butter to the potatoes at this point, it will make the mash too sloppy for a pie filling. Besides, there's quite a bit of fat in the cheese. Right, that's those mashed. Now I'll let that sit and cool for 20 minutes before adding the other ingredients to complete the filling. 
Okay, the potatoes have cooled quite a bit, but they're still warm, which is what you want, as it will make it easier to mix in the cheese. Right, I'll get the potatoes into a bowl, and then I'll start adding the pepper, salt and onions. I'm using white pepper, as it gives this cheese slice a wonderful flavour. Make sure you finely chop the onions. This is to ensure that they cook through in the oven. And I'll give those a quick mix. Next I'll add the cheese. You can use any cheese you like really, but I like the colour, texture and flavour of Red Leicester. Now mix that all together until you have a smooth mixture. The best tool for this is a spatula. Just keep folding and folding until it all becomes smooth and silky. In real time this takes about 3 or 4 minutes. Notice how the colour of this red Leicester starts to dye the potato a nice bright orange. Right, I'll give it a quick taste to make sure the seasoning's correct. And it is. And that's the filling done. Cover the bowl and set it aside until needed. This is another great use for the shower cap, instead of using disposable plastic wrap. Time to start rolling the pastry. First thing to do is dust the bench and the pin with flour. If you're not familiar with rolling pastry, this is something you need to practice at to get a feel for it. The only thing I'll suggest is roll backwards and forwards in straight lines and turn the pastry 90 degrees. Once the pastry becomes too big to turn, then turn the pin 90 degrees. That should keep the pastry reasonably round. Check with your tin that your pastry is big enough, then simply roll it onto the pin and roll it off the pin onto the tin. Make sure you tuck the pastry right down into the corners of the tin. A little tip here, for those with long fashionable nails, make yourself a little ball of pastry, dip it in flour and use that to push down into the corners. Right, I'll put that aside for a minute and quickly go through rolling out the top pastry for the pie. OK, that's the top ready to go. Time to preheat your oven to 190 degrees Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit, on gas mark 5. I'm setting mine to 170 because my oven's fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. Right, time to fill the pie. Place the filling into the pastry and level it off using a fork as shown. Once the filling's level, brush a little water around the edge of the pastry. This is the glue that sticks the top pastry to the bottom. Next, unroll the top pastry over the pie and gently press it down with the palm of your hands to make sure the two pastries stick together, before crimping the pastry together all around the edge as shown. Now carefully trim off the excess pastry, tidy up the edges and apply the egg wash over the whole area. Finally, prick a few vent holes with a fork.
Now get it into the preheated oven and set your timer for 30 minutes. And just to make sure you've got the temperature right, it's 190 Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 5. Once the time's up, get it out of the oven and onto a wire rack and allow it to completely cool. Then I'll come back and let you see what it's like on the inside and of course have a little taste. Ok, it's been about an hour since it came out of the oven, so I'll cut a slice off and have a taste. I prefer this type of pie cold. It's ideal for buffets, parties, because you can get it made well in advance of a function. It also freezes very well too. We used to make these savoury cheese slices on big square flat baking trays, but it works just as well on a small domestic little pie tin like this one. Ok, here we go. And that pastry is crisp, light and buttery. And the filling is absolutely delicious. I hope you give this very simple pie a try. I'm sure your friends and family will love it and give it a big thumbs up too. And once again, please consider supporting my Patreon appeal for as little as $2 per month. Or if you prefer, you can make a one-off small donation using my PayPal page. It really does go a long way towards ingredients and production costs, as every penny pledged goes back into my videos. And whether you've donated or not, thanks again for your wonderful support in watching the channel. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.